Wayne Faulkner, welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Yes, I am. Thanks for the invite, invitation. Oh, my pleasure. I love your website. Your books have such compelling titles and engaging content. So I'm really eager to have a good discussion today. Uh, where are you coming in from? Oh, you're frozen on my side. I'm sorry. Okay. Now you're back. I didn't hear the question. You were frozen. Oh, okay. So where are you joining us from today, Wayne? Oh, from Tennessee. Oh, I love Tennessee. Now you're not wearing orange. I won't tell anyone else. No, in fact, I'm a, I'm a graduate of another university that's probably uh, a very stiff competitor for Tennessee. <laughs> uh, well, I will not ask you any questions. And... You won't tell me any lies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. wait, tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay. I am an author. I've written three books and I'm currently writing my fourth book as we speak. And uh, I'm also a, a coach and a uh, former educator and a corporate manager. And all of that good stuff. And I like writing. I like researching and investigating and coming up with my own conclusion about many, many interesting things. Well, I love the writing, but I am not a fan of the researching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people are not because, I don't know, you just have to have that kind of analytical mind to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, yes. And find your way back through it, correct? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. So uh, what brought about the, this uh, journey as an author? You mentioned you were uh, involved in other pursuits, and now you're an author. So how did you get to this point? Yeah, originally some years ago, I started out writing essays. I wrote 10 essays and published all of them on a platform uh, I think is no longer available now. It's called Easy Articles. And uh, after writing and publishing 10 essays, I said, hmm, that's kind of unique. And they designated me as a diamond and pro author. I said, wow, me? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let's do a little bit more of this. And I had some life circumstances that come about, and I didn't write again for a long, long time. And uh, I started writing some other type things. and. I knew one day my whole desire was to, to write books and hadn't gotten around to that part of writing yet. But once I started down that road, wow, it just went full steam after that. <laughs> Indeed. And your first book, the, the title of your first book is How to Think and Create Success. Yes. And you outline a four-step process there. Oh, yeah, that, that process is very unique. Uh, think, create, meditate, and journal. And matter of fact, my, my new book that I'm working on now is expanding that whole concept itself. Because my first book started out actually as an online course. I was designing and writing an online course. And uh, the more I uh, continued to write on it, it's just, hmm. The thought occurred to me one day, could this be turned into a book? Could this be a book? I said, I don't know. I've never written a book before. I hadn't gotten around to that yet. So um, I said, okay, let's do it. Now is the time. No better time. Let, let's go for the whole nine yards. Let's write the book out of this concept you have here. And that's what led to that book. It's, it's a small book because writing books at that time were new to me. And uh, it is what it is. But the content and the concept is very, very, very interesting. I would say so. How did you develop those four steps? Well, see, you know, when you think about step number, well, all of the steps actually led to that, but particularly number three, the meditation. That is my superpower. <laughs> mm. I have no cape, but I do have a superpower. 
And so does anyone who does it for sure. Meditation. And that's where I get all of my ideas and um, the insight. When you read my books, you're reading an extension of me through meditation. The ideas mm-hmm. that come from the infinite source. And uh, I just write it all down and develop it from there. Wow. And then you, journaling is a big part of your process as well. Yes, yes. It's so very important because you can think on paper. You know, you can write down your solutions, your methods, your ideas, your inventions, your breakthroughs, your setbacks for sure, your challenges. And uh, once you start doing that, it becomes um, something that you like to do because you can always reflect back on things and sort of get clarity of vision of something that you may not have had a great amount of insight on, you can, you know, say, okay, now I, I can connect the dots. I understand what this meant, even though it was three months ago, you know, I see where this is important and I should expand this thought of this, this idea even further now. I have a few different journals. Uh, one is titled things I need out of my head. And I keep okay. that next to my right. bed at mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Then another one is a prayer journal. And what I particularly appreciate about that one is going back, as you mentioned, looking Mm -hmm. back three months, looking back six months, looking back a year and seeing how in the abyss I was around that particular topic or that particular situation. And to see how, you know, that divine presence had brought a new layer or a new understanding or brought me to a new place in that journals are so such a gift yeah. they are useful in the moment they're a great tool but then they are also fantastic when you go back and look and you can see evidence of your growth absolutely and another thing as well that i came to an understanding of maybe many many years from now it will be a part of your legacy mm-hmm. that someone can inherit your journals and you know get information that they may not have gotten any other way and says, wow, back years ago, you know, my dad or my uncle or my grandmother or sister was discovering and talking about these things and writing about these things. So that can just almost be a catalyst to get them going down the road of developing and learning and appreciating things, you know, otherwise that would be unknown to them. You know, they could gain so much information from your journals. Yeah, you really lay yourself bare in a journal in a different <laughs> way than you do in any yeah. other. I would be yeah. I'm kind of very vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I was telling someone, it's almost like talking to a dear friend. You know, you can share your innermost thoughts and feelings with your dear friend if you have one, and the journal can become that friend. Yeah. <laughs> so a warning, dear listener, if you do not want your journals to be read <laughs> later in life, keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the first two steps, think and create, those are two different steps. But how do you differentiate between those two steps? Well, I came to an understanding that when we think, we are creating. Mm-hmm. And 99% of people in this world does not understand that. You think and create. Thinkers are creators and creators are thinkers. And all thoughts are energy. So when you are thinking of something, you actually are creating whatever that is, whatever you focus your attention and mindset on, you're going to create it. Now, the thing that throws people off sometimes is, well, what about a microwave? Is it instant? (laughs) Is it quick? How long does it take? Well, see, you have to understand that, you know, for your own protection, there's, uh, you know, it can happen instantly. It can, you know, it can be an intermediate effect. A long term, it doesn't matter. You, you, you know, it's almost like the old principle, you, you reap what you sow. Well, does it come in the next 10 minutes? Hey, be sure it's right what you're sowing because you don't want it to come if it's evil. You know, <laughs> if it's five years from now, you do not want to face <laughs> what you threw out there, what you planted, you know. So be positive in all that you think and do so you can reap rewards that you would appreciate and welcome. I was a biologist years ago, and Mm -hmm. one of the things I learned about the brain during that time was it has a self-cleaning function. 
to it. Mm. And it's a lot like a little Roomba that we have zipping around our living rooms now. When we go to sleep at night, these cells, they're called glial cells, but they're mm. like a little Roomba. They're going around picking up all the trash and throwing it out from our brains. And how it is distinguished that something is important versus something that needs to go away is the amount of neural connections made. Mm -hmm. And neural connections are made by the time we spend thinking on things. Mm -hmm. So that's a, an, an inspiring and terrifying thought at the same time. Because what do you spend time thinking on? That is what your brain hardwires in, and it will get rid of the rest. So Absolutely. Yeah. By the yes. creating goodness. Yeah. By design, it's, 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 it's almost... It's universal law. You know, it's immutable. It can't be changed. It can't be usurped. It is. So the fact that an individual doesn't know that is almost like in a court of law. If you are, you know, you have no knowledge of law, but you're still are subject to the law. Well, Your Honor, I had no idea that was, well, that doesn't matter. You know, if it, the law is the law, just because you didn't have knowledge or your interpretation was incorrect, the law still stands, you know, so. Whether or not you understand that you're thinking and creating, or, you know, the fact that you do not understand, rather, you don't get a pass. Right. So that's why, another reason why I write the books that I write, to try to help people learn your mind. This is where it all starts and stops. It's your thinking. It's not outside of you. It's internal. The external factors of minor. And I think this is the perfect time then to turn our attention to your second book's uh, mm -hmm. setback or stepping stone, because this is really what we're getting into, right? What are Absolutely. you thinking? Absolutely. Yes. What is the big takeaway in that book? And I'm not asking you to reveal something that you want people to discover in reading it, but what inspired that book? Well, that book is... Uh, um... A culmination of several things, but number one is when you think about the title. I love it. Has, yeah, you do. Okay, great. Wonderful. <laughs> to me, that speaks mindset because two people can experience the same event and respond to it so differently. And it's all in how we frame our thinking. Sure. I mean, there are a lot of forces that go into how we interpret mm -hmm. and experience our background and yeah. all of those things. But significantly informing all of our decisions and reactions is our mindset about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We all are going to have challenges. As a great Jim Rohn once said, he says, life is opportunity mixed with challenges. And there's no other way. <laughs> it's going to rain and it's going to have some sunshine mixed in at some point. However, the thing is, once we face a setback or a challenge, it's the uh, mind shift that we need to go through to get ourselves back on track. Because metaphorically, we are standing in front of a brick wall and we just, we're staring at the wall. We're frozen. We, we, you know, we, so what do I do next? What happens next? Where should I go? Where should I turn? Well, you turn to yourself and you say, hey, it was a setback. Yes, that's a given. It has already happened. So the next thing now is to think about it is a catalyst that's going to spring you forward now and get you going again. Use that setback as a catalyst to move forward. Yeah. And it's your choice to make. If you sit and cry, bucket full of tears, it's not going to change anything. But this book here is to encourage you. And I always say my books, almost a common thread for all of my books is hope, awareness, inspiration, and motivation. That's what I'm trying to deliver. To, to all of my readers. So I want, to, I want you to have hope. I want you to be aware. And I want you to be inspired and be motivated to get going toward your goals. And with all your might, you know, it's a single-minded idea to say, hey, I need more determination and commitment now than ever. Mm -hmm. Because I've just faced something that was, you know, very, very challenging and maybe uh, traumatic to you. You got to get beyond it. You know, so this book is designed to give you ideas and like I say, to, to provide hope, awareness and inspiration, motivation to make that happen. 
I was reading an article recently about uh, a man that works with refugees, and mm -hmm. I believe he might be in Greece. He's somewhere in the Mediterranean, and there are many refugees that come in on boats. And especially with the children, he will gather them and scoop them up and turn them to look out over the ocean and say, look what you've done. <laughs> you crossed that. You yeah. are a superhero. Look what you've done. And he says, just helping them to frame that traumatic experience in a different way mm -hmm. at the time that it has just happened can have powerful results. Yeah. And that's so true because usually what happens is when we look at anyone, particularly someone that we admire, we see all the greatness in them. Oh, they're just fantastic. They're dynamite. They're so, you know, wonderful. But when we go stand in front of the mirror, we don't see anything. We don't see, we just have a blank stare. Okay. Okay. Give yourself some credit. Like you said about the, the refugee kids, you have accomplished great things. But if you don't see something about yourself that you can admire and give appreciation for, you, you're going you're gonna to be self-defeated, usually. You're going to think very negative about yourself. And this can work in, in less significant ways, too. Here's a conversation uh -huh. that my husband and I have every single November. <laughs> when the forecast of snow first comes into our weather apps, my mm -hmm. husband's shoulders will just drop. His head will drop. And he just knows he's going to be scooping so much snow all winter. He's dreading it already. And I'll say, you know, it's going to be the same amount of snow, regardless of how you <laughs> feel about it. Yeah. So why not be happy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I usually run fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yes. It has a lot to do with perception, how we perceive things. So how are we perceiving ourselves? Again, when we look in front of the mirror, how do you perceive yourself? You know, surely there should be something about yourself, excuse me, in your life that you can celebrate. And that should happen every day. Have a personal celebration about well, you and your success and anything you've achieved. Yeah, I have come uh, around to affirmations and I love them. Oh, I yes. Think, you know, if we could write one on the bathroom mirror that we would see the first thing every morning when we wake up. What a beautiful way to start the day. Just that gentle reminder. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, in my first book, How to Think and Create Success, I stated it in this manner. Every day I say, what, what kind of world are you creating for yourself today? Mm. Because, you know, our world... Our individual world is based on an inner projection. We project to the outside what's going on on the inside. So I asked the question of readers, what kind of world are you creating for yourself today? You can create that world. And by that, I mean simply this. Are you creating a world that's filled with love, hope, peace, harmony, joy, strength, health? wellness, abundance, wonder, awareness, inspiration, motivation, creativity, generosity, and so forth. So if you affirm that every day, you say, I want to accept it any other way. This is my world that I'm creating today. You know, I'm sitting on the side of my bed. This is how I'm starting. So it doesn't matter what happens around my environment. My world is contingent upon my creation. So I'm setting the tone for my world. Nobody can argue with that. I love that. Now, Wayne, you mentioned your superpower is meditation. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had challenges meditating? Do you go through times or seasons where it's more difficult than in other times? Well, before I answer your direct question, let me briefly explain, explain how I started meditating, what it was like for me. Now, the person who introduced me to meditation, it was a book, and uh, they suggested that I started my meditation duration of time at 24 minutes. And at that point, he's may as well have said 24 hours. 
Because right. 24 minutes starting out for me was, was equivalent to 24 hours. The hardest thing that I had to learn to do was to get my mind and attention to focus. Because my mind started to race over all of the things. I got to go to the dentist. I got to stop at the grocery store. I have to pay the utility bill. I had to get to work. I had this project I'm working on. You know, all the things that we concern ourselves with in basic everyday life. Those were the things that were on my mind. So I said, whoa, wait a minute. I'm thinking about things that I probably should be thinking about, you know, because those are things that have to get done for sure. But this can't be what meditation is about. So how I saw that, I found out that my real problem was I didn't know how to relax. So once I was able to, to create a process and a framework of getting myself to totally relax, because I sit in a chair and meditate. Some people sit, you know, on the floor or what have you, you know, legs crossed, you know, so then the yoga position. And that's fine if you like that, but I prefer sitting in a chair, upright in a chair like I'm sitting. As a matter of fact, this is the same chair in my office. But I'm meditating it every morning. So once I learned how to get my body to relax, my mind started to settle down. And then I was able to focus on what I needed to focus on during my meditation session. So that became even more interesting because here's something very unique, which is going to be in my new book. <laughs> I'm giving away trade secrets. <laughs> this is how I do it. <clears throat> so, for instance, I'm writing a chapter, as I'm doing now. So, you know, say I'm on chapter eight. So it's all brand new content. It's almost like a blank page. I got seven chapters completed before that. So what's going to be on chapter eight? I have a title, and sometimes I may not have a title. And this is what I do. And this is what I recommend people to do as well, if they're going to follow this concept. Before I go to bed at night, I'm sitting on the side of my bed. This is what I say. I say, I am joyfully anticipating receiving creative ideas while I am asleep. I'm going to bed. Now, during the night, the magic happens. When I wake up the next morning, and I'm usually awakened about 4.40, because I started making preparation for my meditation session, which is at 5 a.m. I meditate from 5 to 6 every morning, you know. And so when I start, that's going to be the topic of my meditation. That unknown, undiscovered chapter title. And then that meditation has got to get me going with at least a first paragraph to give me insight as to what this, this chapter is going to be about. Believe it or not, this is amazing. It works. It works. Just as sure as I'm sitting here in this chair talking to you on this podcast, the information starts flowing. And I cannot explain other than one source where that could come from because it's not coming from me, but it comes through me. It, it is expressed through me. It's imprinted on my mind. Then it's expressed through me when I get to my computer and I start typing out. It just flows. And sometimes it's so amazing that I just smile to myself. I say, this is, this is the most incredible thing. <laughs> That's why I call it my superpower. I said, I have discovered something here. It's, just, it's hard to explain to a person who doesn't really understand until they do understand from, you know, me teaching about it. If you can gain the, you know, the mastery of this, it will serve you so well. It's unbelievable because any situation, a challenge, or problem, if you're a creative person and you're creating, you've got an infinite source. It's unlimited. It has never, ever failed me. Now, let me say this in all transparency and honesty. There have been some times, and, I, and in my book, I caution this, never try to cause a, you know, something to happen. You, you, you don't strain and push, you know, say, well, it's not flowing like it did two days ago. Why? No, don't question the process. 
Just relax and stay calm. Never try to force an outcome. If you just stay relaxed and calm, and calm, the, you know, the source of creativity, creative information may not come that day, but two days later. The spigot opens up and it just starts flowing. You just have to be ready. Yeah. So delay is not denial. Just trust the process. Yes. I love that. And it comes through that gratitude is such a central expression of yours. Yes, yes, yes. I, it's, it's just wonderful. It's just a wonderful experience, you know. Yeah. And like I'm working on a chapter now. And this particular chapter is about meditation, which, you know, like I'm explaining it to you. I'm explaining it through a person who's a character who is, you know, has a particular uh, profession and he needs the ability to do what I just explained, you know, so he's going to take you through his process and how he's learned this and the benefit of it, you know, and how he or she is so amazed, you know, so this is now my superpower. <laughs> I read this in the book. The author, he said, it's his superpower. Now I claim it as my own. It is my superpower. I use the same concept and process, you know, for my creativity, my ideas. Yes. Wayne, do you record your books to be uh, disseminated through Audible? No, I haven't gotten around to that yet, but that's probably forthcoming in the future, I'm sure. Well, I look forward to that because I couldn't say with a lot of confidence, I would sit and listen to you read the dictionary. <laughs> I love the sound of your voice. I oh, love the thank joy you. that comes with it, the gratitude that is expressed through it. And I would love to hear you read your books. Well, hey, you're giving me an idea. <laughs> I may have to speed up that, you know, that process to have that done. Wayne, are there any last thoughts you would like to leave with folks today? I would just like to say, uh, my books will challenge you to think. They will encourage you. They will you know, provide you with hope, awareness, inspiration, and motivation. And let me say this while I'm on your podcast. Any of your listeners and followers, if they were, e if they were to email me at info at think create success.com and put in the subject line of that email ebook. I will send them a return link where they can order the book, the ebook for $5. Fantastic. And I will even put that link in the show notes to make it easier. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Wayne. Thank you. <laughs>